artists and welcome back to another episode of paint along with sky today we're doing a fairly simple and lovely one of my new favorite paintings that i've created uh, just a little rose still life something really simple and fun for this morning uh, let's see we'll be using our three standard brushes just like usual big brush, medium brush, and small brush. Nothing too tricky there. You want a flat brush uh, like this definitely uh, when we get started on the background here. Uh, so make sure you have those guys. If you don't know what materials that you need, uh, check the description box below. There is a list of all the materials that we're going to use for this painting. Uh, the colors are going to be phthalo green, a nice bright sunny yellow, red, black, and white. I have two whites on here because I know I'm going to use a lot, so I know I'm going to use uh, white for my background, and then I'm also going to use it uh, for my foreground as well. So I just kind of pre-prepped that for myself, but feel free to uh, yeah, always go back for more paint whenever you need it. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the painting today. Something... Just really pretty to brighten our spirits. My thoughts go out to anyone affected by the virus. My other job is actually a news editor, so it's been a pretty crazy week. Uh, so whether you know someone that's sick or, you know, most likely I'm, I'm thinking about economic impacts, it's pretty crazy. But I'm glad that you can be here with me today and we can have, you know, half an hour or 45 minutes together to just be calm and paint. And it's going to be a pleasure to teach the class today too. So happy to be here, glad to have you guys here. All right, let's get started with our big square brushes uh, and just a little bit of water on those. And before we fill in our background, just really quick, I'm gonna do a teeny little sketch mark with just the lightest of gray of where my vase is gonna be. So I'm gonna go well, about halfway down the right hand side of the canvas and I'm gonna do a little half circle like so. Very narrow oval rather. And then just bring that line off the canvas. We're gonna have a chance to fill that in and sort of straighten the shape if need be here in a minute. Uh, so don't worry about that looking perfect at all. Okay, I'm gonna rinse the gray out of my brush. Going to take a sip of coffee. <laughs> and we're really gonna jump into it now. So grab some white, we're gonna use yellow. We're gonna start right in the middle of our canvas. We're gonna use this back and forth brush stroke technique. And you just wanna bring it right next door to the vase. You're not really gonna see this part later, so it's not super important, but you do wanna get some paint on there. This is just the first layer. Okay, so that was yellow with white. Now I'm gonna grab just yellow I'm going to go on the outside, sort of creating like an oval shape, and this would go down there, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to paint the vase with the base colors there in a minute. Okay, getting that sort of glowing effect. Now I'm gonna grab just a little bit of the phthalo green, my favorite color, pinch of white as well. And actually a little bit of water, just a tiny bit, not to where it's dripping wet, just to where it's damp. A damp brush will help you blend those two colors together. You especially wanna be wary of drips if you're using an easel I do use an easel generally when I'm creating the paintings, but I think the visual angle is better with the top down uh, camera angle here that I've been using. But we're gonna mix it up in the future. I have aspirations of a Bob Ross type studio 
with multiple cameras <laughs> in the future, years in the future. You can use some yellow if uh, you got a little too heavy handed with your green. And of course also if you're bringing your color too far into the center with that green, always feel free to clean your brush if you feel like things are getting too messy and you're pulling the color where it shouldn't be. You can rinse your brush and add some more of that color right back on top. Remember, that's what's cool about acrylic painting. Never such thing as a mistake because you can always cover it up. <laughs> Okay, and then just this outside edge here with phalo green mixed with white. You can either take this green onto the sides or you can do the sides later with black. That is up to you. So you'll have a pretty different color green now you're going to blend into that yellow green. I really like these background colors together. I've had this painting up in my house all week and it's been very cheerful and colorful, which is my usual style. Getting kind of more light handed as I come into the yellow because I don't want to bring too much green and also keeping my brush going different directions. So you don't want to have like one solid pattern. You want all different directions. Keep that brush moving. Upper right hand corner here. A little bit of water help the paint go nice and smooth. You want the paint to soak into the canvas fibers. Beautiful. Okay. I think I did get a little heavy handed with the phalo. So I'm going to take, again, just like I mentioned, you can do, play with it and bring that yellow back out. Rinsing the brush if it gets too green. using my apron as a napkin. <laughs> my apron is gloriously covered with paint. Sometimes I forget to wear it and I'll just <laughs> wipe my brush on my shirt really bad. Don't forget your aprons, everybody. Okay, that looks good to me. Medium brush. Sip of coffee. Bear with me. <clears throat> okay, let's use some black. We're gonna go in our vase area now. You can go ahead and trace over that shape that you originally started with. And then this top oval is going to be filled in with black. Okay, and then we're going to do a couple of stripes. Sometimes what's helpful is breaking it in half. And then I'm actually going to kind of curve the brush stroke as well to give the vase that curved cylindrical look. Curve brush strokes that cut it in half, and then half of that and half of that. And then you can fatten up the stripes 
to your preference. You can have a bunch of stripes, a couple fat ones, however you'd like. We're going to fill in uh, the white parts with white paint here in a minute as well. So don't worry about a little bit of blue or yellow or green in there. Okay. I'm just fattening up the stripes. If you are painting along with me on Saturdays, I would love to see your paintings. I created a Facebook group called the Art Club. That's a art share for artists of all levels. And it's open to everybody and we'd love to see your creations, whether it be ones that you did through my classes or just the ones on your own. And you can even sell in that group. I want to mention that. <laughs> There's so many groups where they're like, no self-promotion. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but like, I made a nice new YouTube video and it's just trying to teach people how to paint. I'm not trying to hurt anybody with my, I'm not an MLM, which uh, it's not that bad anyway, but I don't know. I'm not trying to limit anybody. I'm trying to help people out and I want to have a supportive community where, yeah, sometimes we might even buy each other's art. So you can, you know, share your Etsy shop <laughs> or your print shop. Maybe you're a photographer. I want to see it. I want to share with each other and I want to create a community of artists. Uh, that's not only just me. I put my stuff in there too, <laughs> but it's for everybody. Okay, and then once we get these, the width that we want, all we have to do is fill in the white spots and let this dry. So I deliberately made mine a little bit skinnier this time because I've been staring at this on my wall all week, like I said. Uh, and I was just like, mm, I think it would look better if it was just a little bit more narrow. And actually I can see it's like slightly crooked, but I'm going to leave it. That is okay. And then so just pure white. And you're really just going to clean up whatever color you might have brought into there. And then also just fill in with paint as well, just for a consistent effect. I mean, granted, from far away, you wouldn't be able to tell if you just left these white without painting them, but I like it to look really consistent and clean, and it's all about the details for me. Maybe because that's I'm also a news editor. It's all, it's, you know, one little mistake is glaring but if you overlook a bunch like that's when stuff doesn't look good I mean I don't know how else to explain that uh, but yeah everything is made up of little decisions and little choices so we're gonna do the best that we can when we're painting we're gonna use the right color and we're going to keep our brush strokes going the same direction. And we're going to go the extra mile and clean up those areas that may bother us so that the finished product is beautiful. Okay. Looking good to me. And again, I'm going to hit this with black later on the sides so that's going to be a clean edge later <clears throat> right there like that um, but if you want to just paint the sides with whatever colors on the face you can go ahead and just wrap the color onto the sides there as well okay so you may want to give your canvas a second to dry uh, before we start doing what's inside of our vase but it looks like mine's actually fully dry and ready to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and power on through. 
So you're going to want to rinse your brush. You may even want fresh, clean water uh, because we are going to be using red and pink and white. I'm going to do that. And let's use our medium brushes again. And we're going to start with pink. So I'm going to use red and white. And we're going to start building our little bouquet here. So to do the roses, we're going to start just with circles. And you're going to put your circles, they're going to be sort of smaller and some are sort of bigger. You're going to put them everywhere, coming out of the top part of your vase here. Building your composition. Some might overlap. I'm going to fill them in in a minute. But right now I'm just sort of tracing out the shape. You want a fair amount of these and you want it to sort of be circular and then like a bunch. Yep, I like that. Slightly different again than my original. Sometimes I end up doing paintings like three or four times. Before I'm I end up with the one that I like. I don't know if very many artists do that or if they just work on the same painting. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you do? And before we fill those in, let's figure out where we're going to put our greenery. I'm going to use my baby brush for this. I'm going to mix up like a lime green with my phalo and my yellow. And here's where you'll add the stems. Kind of like little lollipops. A bouquet of lollipops. So we're understanding how we're sort of building our little bouquet here and then like we're floral designers we're going to decide where we want to put some greenery so I did a curved line coming out from the top here I think I'll do one coming the other direction and then one that would come kind of Grand Central Station here focal point in the middle Okay, that looks good to me. We're just gonna start with that. And now we're gonna grab our medium sized brush again and kind of get these shapes filled in. I'm gonna be kind of jumping around here from shape to shape uh, and that's actually done deliberately so that each area can dry. So just follow along. Okay, now we're just taking that same pink color and we're going to fill in those circles. And don't think that, oh, okay, so because I did these circles and then I filled them in and then, oh man, I wish I had a couple more circles, but it's too late. It's not too late. You can most certainly add a few more flowers, even at the end. Again, acrylic painting. You can always add more. You can always fix your mistakes. I'm allowing there to be some color variation within even just filling these in. And I'm also making some sort of larger. So I always start on the smaller side. So you can always make it bigger much harder to make it smaller. I'm 
if you do accidentally make a shape too large, sometimes you can take a Q-tip, get it wet with clean water, and remove the paint. If you can't, then you can do a little patchwork job and paint over it. And that is trickier, but I do it all the time. Because mistakes happen, and we're human. I'm really gonna kind of dress the shape here of my bouquet. I'm liking, I'm liking where it's going. All right. And then we're gonna switch all around like I was saying before, so back and forth uh, between the two brushes here, so baby brush, and then we'll do a little bit more greenery. So my original, I just want to point out, I have a little bit of like a secondary greenery type. I'm actually just going to do uh, the ones with leaves today. Okay, so we have our baby brushes. Just working with that same green. All right, now we're gonna create the full shape here. So you wanna have this curve line sort of trail off delicately like so. And then what we're going to do is turn that last part of the brush stroke into a leaf. And then from there, on either side, you'll have leaves of increasing size. So, like so. And then these ones will be sort of pointing downwards. <clears throat> so everything is slightly angled downwards, which gives it that draping effect. And then go ahead and fill those leaves in with your medium green. Careful laying your hand down on the canvas like I'm doing. Sometimes I have paint there. <coughs> Choking on my coffee a little bit. That's what I get for drinking while I'm trying to teach. Okay, and then same idea. It's okay if the green is fairly similar to the green that you're painting on top of because this is just the base color and we're going to add a secondary green in a minute. Okay. Some of the stems. They would actually go all the way into the black area there. And then this one, only we can see a few leaves there. Okay, this looks cute. It's a little bit simpler than my original, but I'm going to keep it that way. Okay, now I'm going to take a slightly darker green with just a little bit more phthalo. 
I'm going to create kind of like some squiggly. Greenery coming out as well. That looks nice in a different shade of green. And just kind of here and there. Wherever you like. And then we're going to go even darker by adding a tiny pinch of black. And we're going to finish up our greenery with this dark green. Okay, and then you're just going to go over the shapes that you just created, adding in this shadow. That's also sort of like an outline. So I'm outlining each one of those leaves. Really making it pop. It's cute to have a little point the end of your leaf makes it look very graceful and then also you do a curved line in the middle of each of these leaves and that will finish off that area there okay so same thing in all of the greenery home stretch everybody doing good let me know if you made it this far in today's tutorial graceful little point it's all about the details every single brushstroke matters what's so great about painting though is you really have to stay present okay let's take that same green and also add it onto our stems just kind of doing one side Okay, cute. Now let's switch back to the roses. I'm actually going to use my baby brush. Still, little brush again. Rinsed it off uh, so that it doesn't have any green on it. And now we're going to do a few things in our roses with two different brushes. So again, starting with the baby brush, let's do the very center of the rose first. I'm going to use a very dark red, which almost looks like almost brownish. And in the center of each of these, I'm going to do a blob. And you don't want it to be a perfect circle. And again, we're kind of moving our brush stroke around moving our hand around so that we get different direction brush strokes okay now let's take regular red and we're just going to add a few streaks of color in each of these Roses. 
And it's totally fine if it blends a little bit. Kind of use that to your advantage. We want to have a lot of different tones and sometimes the brush will be very light and sometimes you'll push down a little bit harder. As you're creating your roses, you can also bring them further out. And you can also sort of wiggle your brush and get longer sort of smooshed brush strokes that look like the petals. This first color is sort of just like a secondary shade of pink. We're going to do more wiggly brush strokes with our dark red in a minute. It's raining here. How's the weather where you guys are? I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it's raining here most of the time. Well, half the time, technically. Which is fine with me. I love it. I'm a redhead, so I don't need much sun. <laughs> Can't handle it. Looking good. Just a few more colors. So now we're going to do our darkest red. And then all we have to do is a little bit of white here and there. And we're actually going to be done. So really good job, you guys. And actually, I'm going to use a little bit more red. Because I have mostly what's pink now. And I want nice bright red to start with and then I'm going to take a little bit of black and make a really vibrant dark red. Okay, and then you're going to go on the outside edges of your roses and kind of wiggle your way around, cleaning up those edges, and then a few wiggles on the inside as well. And this is where you want to decide which rose is on top of which Make sure that you understand your composition. Mm -hmm. And then just again adding a little bit of that dark red inside each rose as well as defining that outside edge. If you get too wiggly, they start to look like a different flower and not roses. So make sure that some still have like a fairly circular shape. Although, I mean, if you get a bunch of flowers that are like carnations or something, that's beautiful too. It doesn't have to be roses. I have another painting that's sunflowers that I'll paint one day with you guys. That's my favorite flower, sunflowers. Roses are beautiful though. Okay. Last couple here. Okay. 
nice. And then I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to use just a little bit of white. A couple places. Okay. It's okay if it's a little bit pink. And I am going to try to make these lines somewhat smooth and circular rather than continue that wiggly because I think I got a little too wiggly with my dark red but hey each time I paint it's kind of a surprise for me what it's going to turn out like too so it's fine I still like it I think this white really adds a nice little touch and just kind of pulls it together with the black and white vase. That's my dog. He likes to sleep in the bathroom. I have no idea why. During the day. Well, I do. it's because it's cooler in there and he's very furry. Okay. Looking good. I like them. They're cute. All right, final little finishing touch here. So you'll grab just, again, a little bit of clean white and that tiny brush and just a few brush strokes that are like reflecting off of your vase. Really just less is more with that. Uh, yeah, and then you can put any other final touches that you'd like on your painting. Uh, if you like this painting, make sure and hit like, please subscribe if you haven't. Also, if you have subscribed, make sure you hit the little bell icon right next door and that way it tells you when there's a new tutorial. Otherwise it won't tell you, it'll just show up on a suggested page somewhere on the inside. It's kind of hard to find. Um, but I'm going to be posting new tutorials every Saturday morning, always designed for beginning painters. And again, check out the description box below if you need materials so that you can paint along. Uh, you can also check out my shop, get yourself a Sky Pratt original uh, or other cool piece of merch. There's some a lot of great stuff coming up. Uh, so make sure you join us in the art club as well. And until next time, stay creative. <laughs>